Hi everyone, we're glad you could join us today. I am David Wilson. We are in the Transcendent Parking Offices and we're going to handle your questions today, whatever they might be as it relates to parking on campus. If you ever need to come by our office, we're located at 155 South Razorback and that's right across the road from Bud Walton Arena. So we hope that you will come by if you need something, but we also have contact information that makes things a little more convenient. Uh, you can see on this sheet we have uh, our email parking.ur.edu, uh, I said email, I meant our website. Um, the email of course is on this next line, parking at uark.edu. And there's a number that you can call us during business hours. Anybody that can, can take your question on the phone will be glad to help you through any question or issue that you might have. That is 575-PARK. So we hope you'll get in touch with us anytime that you need us throughout the entire school year. Um, we're standing in front of a map. Uh, this map, of course, is on our website. Uh, we will also have some hard copies available at different places on campus, and you're welcome to pick up one of those when you have the opportunity. Uh, you can see there's different colors on this map. Uh, basically, for students, you're going to be parking in red on this map if you're in resident reserve parking. Uh, you will park in green if you have student parking. Uh, we do have remote parking that is in this orange area, kind of south of the main campus. It's not as close as the other areas, but it, it doesn't cost as much, and it's supported by our Razorback Transit buses. So those are some options that you may uh, consider. There's also garage parking. Those uh, who get in that have to be on a waiting list. So. Uh, we may answer specific questions about that as we go today. You may have some of those. So uh, we, we often refer people to the map because it is a good tool you'll want to be familiar with as you get uh, more familiar with our campus. Uh, we're going to have a discussion today. We're going to have more questions as we go. So we are, we are so glad you tuned in. Emily, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Emily. I'm a marketing intern with University Housing. And feel free to tell us where you're tuning in from and feel free to leave any comments or questions you have in the chat. And yeah, so can you tell us about your family or just did they go to school here? Sure. Are we, you want to be seated first or you want to just go ahead as we are? Because I'm informal. Yeah, we can We're sit. Be uh, now the question was about me or my family. I, I uh, was a school principal before I came to this role. I did a lot of work uh, in Missouri I'm originally from Arkansas, though, so I have a lot of connections to this state and to this university. I, I had two of my three children went to school here. Uh, so uh, when I came on board at Transit and Parking, I already knew a lot about you know, what our students need and, and uh, what our students are about. And I knew a lot about the university, too. So I'm glad to be here. And I'm also glad to work with students anytime we, we have a chance to do that. Can you give us an overview of how resident reserve parking is distributed? Okay, um, now some of you have already worked through this process. Basically, when you secure your housing arrangement here at the University of Arkansas, our friends at, at UA Housing will place you on a waiting list. And now, once uh, we get well into the summer, usually in early part of July, they will provide that list to our department and our folks begin working through that. Now, I don't know where your name might be on that list, but usually it takes most of July to work through that list. And, and I think they're still working through a few names now. Uh, if, you, if they got to your name on the list, uh, you received an email asking you basically if you wanted that parking or not. Uh, so uh, some of you who are viewing, uh, you may have already gotten that email. Uh, there are a few who may still yet hear from us, but. We just don't have enough resident reserve parking for everyone who wants it, so not everybody does get that. So what are the other alternatives if you're not getting resident reserve? I guess parking deck maybe? Or? Sure. Um, what we've done in recent years, if you wanted resident reserve parking but didn't get it, if we had an opportunity to put you in a garage that's near where you're living, we would offer that to you. Um, Sometimes that's a possibility, sometimes it's not. But if it is, uh, we'll make sure you have that opportunity. And I'm talking to the students who are going to be living on campus. Um, we'll work through that list and work 
and hopefully get to your name. But if not, we're always going to have a place for everyone to park, everyone that wants to bring a vehicle to campus. Uh, when I mentioned the map earlier in, in the, green, the green shaded areas, those uh, parking permits are much more affordable and we never run out of those spaces. I mean, we're always going to have a place to park. It may not be right by the front door of the residence hall that you're living in, but we will have a place for your vehicle one way or the other. Yeah, let us know if you have any questions. We've got the guy who's got all the answers right here in front of us. So uh, please. I may not have all the answers, but I do have some at the very least. So uh, <laughs> if, if, if we run across a question that we can't answer today, we may ask you to get in touch with us through one of the uh, contact uh, pieces of contact information I shared earlier, and we'll be glad to get back with you. And we have a question. Someone says, I paid for Garland Parking Garage parking. What do I do if there are no spots available? I'm assuming you mean if you pull in there and there are no spots available. Uh, we don't really oversell our garages. Uh, there should be a space for you there somewhere. It may not be the space that you're most accustomed to, but there will be an available place in there. Uh, if we have situations where somebody parked in there illegally, our parking control takes care of that. But for the most part, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, we don't sell spaces on campus, we sell parking permits, and that means that you go to a, a space in your area, in your garage, or in your parking area that you find available for that permit. And I actually had a parking permit for a while in Garland, I can say that I didn't always park in the same spot. Mm -hmm. I had to move around and find a spot, mm -hmm. but there was always a spot in Garland. Right. And I can say the same about resident reserve parking, we're not going to sell more of those than we have spaces available. So there'll be times, I tell students this quite often, if you're living in one of the residence halls, let's say in the middle of the day, you run to the store and come back, you may find that the space you were in is no longer available, but there'll be a spot for you somewhere within that lot. And Susie asks, how do I get parking if I'm bringing my car for the second semester? If you come, you mean in January, I'm assuming is what they're asking. If you come in January, you won't have as many options available because most of the parking will be sold. But the green parking permit that I mentioned earlier, that will always be available. You can, a person could technically buy one of those in October, November, January, or whenever, and then they would have uh, parking there. And depending upon when you buy it, they'll, they'll prorate it too on the cost. You won't have to pay for the entire year uh, if you're not if you don't purchase it at the beginning of the year. And David, um, the shopping cart for like buying the parking pass, you just go to the parking website, right, and go through that process. It is. It's on the and I can hold this up again if that helps. This this website will answer just almost any question that you might imagine about um, our parking operation. And so feel free to go to that and browse around any time. But yes, that is where you can actually make a transaction and purchase the permits that we're talking about. Uh, by that I mean for, for the green uh, lots and also for the commuter lot that I mentioned that is south of the main campus. Uh, you can purchase those on there. You can do it now. That became available beginning August 1st. Um, someone asked, are there certain levels of the parking decks that are only for students and only for staff? They do have some of that specified and uh, I couldn't go through it all now because I don't have it in my mind, but when, when you come into a parking area, there are signs that will indicate uh, which ones they're available. By uh, color, right? It'll be yellow. It's, uh, it's indicated by a sign. There are some colors there, but you know, forgive me, I don't know all the specifics, for, but I'll give you an example. If you go into the Harmon Avenue parking garage, the, the lower levels on that facility are for those who need metered parking and uh, others who park on the upper levels. That's, those are used a lot by people who have permits here. And I say upper levels is not too inconvenient because that facility is on a hill. If you enter on the fourth level um, from the west, uh, it feels like you're going in on the first level. Uh, so those who park on upper levels, it depends on where you go into that garage. If you're entering from the north or if you're entering from the east, it's going to have a completely different look. But uh, as a person gets more familiar with that garage or with what's available on campus, you, you know where you're going right away. 
Um, Alice asks, when can we start parking in the Garland parking garage? Uh, if you have a permit, you can park in there now. Um, but I, I don't, I'm sure that there are some people who will be getting a permit there who haven't yet been notified. Well, during the move-in time period, I think. The Is that what we're getting at? Yeah, I think we're talking about from, uh, from really what? Wednesday until right. Saturday, late Wednesday Saturday. Wednesday through Saturday this week. If, yes, if you're talking about the movie, and that's when it would be, certainly. And um, the top floors of those parking decks, the two parking decks are reserved for parents, I believe, mm -hmm. during that time. And, and I would consult the information that housing has provided for you. Uh, they tried to cover all the bases with that info, so that's a very helpful packet. But if you have questions in the meantime, you certainly can phone them or you can phone our department and we'll try to make sure someone can help you. On Saturday, Saturday evening, all parking really reverts back to its normal flow. Correct. It's only during that short period that we have move-in mm -hmm. patterns. Move-in can be a complicated affair, uh, but they've done a lot to really improve it, especially in recent years. Uh, please, uh, if you have any problems, let someone know. Um, if you if you have a, a a longer wait than maybe you anticipate please don't worry about that because we're going to get everybody in the in the facilities and if there's a situation where you're not parked right where you need to be you can hopefully find someone on site that can help you uh, we do caution everybody though not just during move-in but throughout the year if someone on campus tells you it's okay to park in a certain area please be careful because there are times when someone who doesn't even work for transit and parking may tell you it's okay to park there and it's not. So I, I, I mentioned that to caution you. We don't want anybody to accidentally park in a place that's forbidden for their permit and then get a citation. We, we try to avoid that at all costs. Um, someone asks, how do the permits work? I see it went into my account. Do we purchase a sticker for our car or how does that work? Very good question. Uh, in the past, every permit was indicated by a decal that went on the windshield. Um, that has changed now because we are transitioning to what is called license plate recognition. What is important is when you are signed up for that, make sure uh, on our website that you enter the license plate number of the vehicle you'll be driving. It's important that that's in the system because now they're going to scan parking lots and they'll know that you're parked there legally just by your license plate. So we won't need a sticker on our windshield. That's kind of uh, going to be a thing of the past. Uh, but for new students on campus, the main thing to remember is, number one, make sure you have the correct license plate number entered into our system. And number two, make sure that when you park that that license plate is always facing the drive lane. That's going to mean for some people you can't back in or you can't pull through a parking space. Uh, they have to be able to see your plate as they scan through a lot. Um, we, uh, I say for some individuals because there are some state, many students come from Missouri or they come from Texas and those, they have a license plate on the front of their vehicle. So mm -hmm. you can park either way in a space as long as you have a plate that's, that's facing the, uh, the exterior uh, or the drive lane. Um, someone asks, or someone makes a comment, we were told not to park in Garland until Saturday night. Um, I mean, You should double parents, check your parking yeah, packet. Okay. Parents uh, will be taking up, will have space in the top three mm -hmm. levels of, the, of that parking deck during the move-in experience. Um, I think you could still park in metered parking, and there's probably some student parking as well. Um, but we're talking about the top three floors being reserved for that. And someone asks, can we park in any green lot after move-in or only lot 56? Any green lot. Yes, and be careful about, um, you know, there are a number of lots that still have places reserved for uh, ADA parking, uh, people with special needs for their parking. Those are always off limits, but when you go to uh, park during move-in, we've tried to be very accommodating and make all of the other areas available to you. Well, all right, well, we're currently caught up on the questions. Um, is there anything else? Well, I always caution people to please contact us if there's any question at all. Uh, I will say that if you're a student coming to campus for the first time, um, 
it takes a week or two to get familiar with where everything is. So please be careful about that. Uh, if you are in a hurry, let's say, like I mentioned before, if you go to the store during the middle of the day, it may be that you come back to campus and you're in a hurry to get to a certain class. Now, that's when a lot of mistakes happen. I mean, if you're in a hurry, you can't find a place to park near where you need to be or where you usually are. Sometimes students will say, I just gotta park here, I can't be late for class. So they will park and rush into a building wherever their class is and take their chances on getting a citation. Now, you may get a citation in those cases, but like I said, we caution not to do that. Plan ahead, uh, make sure you have plenty of time. Uh, for some students, they're commuting to campus. Some students may leave campus and come back, but try to build plenty of time into your schedule. Put yourself some cushion in there so that you can avoid that. We really don't want anybody to be getting citations, especially when they first get started here. So as you get more familiar with things on campus, uh, you know, this, this won't be as big of a problem. You'll know exactly where you need to be. You'll know where there's plenty of room. You'll know how much time it takes to get from where you are to where you need to be. Um, and along those lines, let me add this. Um, if you're living on campus, sometimes students will, will think that, you know, I can hop in my car, I can drive to another part of campus and park and maybe get closer to class. Now we advise against that because there's a number of factors there. Number one, uh, we have, I guess it's going to be about 28,000 students. Is that, you think that's about right? So more than 27, 28,000. 27, 28,000 students. They're not all here at the same time, but when we're up and running and everybody's going to class, it's like a small city. And we have a lot of traffic congestion because commuters are coming in. So uh, if you try to drive from where you're parked near your residence hall to another part of campus, you may end up getting stuck in some traffic. You may find that you can't find the parking space where you wanted. You may, you know, it's best just to go ahead and walk to where you need to be on campus. Or you can hop on one of the Razorback Transit buses and just get dropped off on another part of campus. But, but that's a part of our planned uh, commute for a lot of people. But it's best, if you're living on campus, it's best not to even move your vehicle, uh, you know, unless you're leaving campus for whatever reason. And we now have scooters around campus too, which are increasingly popular, so. Mm -hmm. There's some other options there. I'll also mention this, UAPD is not here today, but they do a great job of trying to make sure that everyone's safe. And they will tell you, if they were here today, I'm sure one of the officers would say, please be careful on your scooters. You know, wear a helmet, take every precaution, watch out for pedestrians. And if you are a pedestrian, be very careful when you're going across campus, you know, they would say, you know, don't be on your phone texting and walking through a crosswalk. Uh, you gotta be safe. I mean, as a pedestrian, the truth is, you have the right of way in a crosswalk. But if you're not watching out, you know, accidents do happen. Uh, fortunately, they don't happen often here on campus, but you wanna be safe. You know, you always gotta look out for traffic and. And if you're on campus and with friends or on your phone, sometimes, you know, people forget that. Um, we have a question from Cameron. Cameron asks, when do we get to leave lot 56 to our resident reserved parking? Um, Saturday evening, we'll open back up again. All right. Anything well, else? questions now? Or? Nope, we're caught where, up. Where, where can we uh, hear about the latest, greatest stuff regarding parking? Should we check in on your social medias? We, you got? It's, I'm glad you mentioned that because we encourage everybody to follow us on uh, social media. We are on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. And so uh, we hope you'll find us there and follow us. Uh, if you go to our website, it has that information. It also has a number of articles. We have some recent articles that's been published this summer that uh, some of them are geared uh, to students who are new to campus. We also have, uh, I call it an online magazine called uh, talk T N P. Uh, if you go there, uh, it has some articles uh, uh, related to campus life or things that students might be interested in, but also some information. We have one article called "What What Every Student Wants to Know About Parking." So you might want to refer to that because it'll take you to the helpful info that that you might be looking for anyway. Well, all right. If there's nothing else, do you want to sign us off? Sure. 
Uh, we appreciate you tuning in today. Now, there's going to be other questions that come up during the school year, and if when those questions arise, please get in touch with us because that's why we're here. I'll go ahead and put this information up here again, uh, our website, our email, and of course our number. Uh, if you call this number during a regular business day, uh, someone's going to be there who can help you and we'll be glad to get you the information that you need. And you can also come by here uh, in person if you need to. Uh, that's, that's why we're here as well. We have people at our front counter. Uh, and one thing that I like to do is just meet with students um, anytime that they might need some assistance. I talk to parents sometimes and I'll say, have him call me or have her get in touch with me and I'll make sure they get to the right place or the right person. So uh, please keep that in mind and uh, we hope you have a great school year.